like I said, oh, he's not even an immortal, my bad. Fully booked, emergency heal, HP, defense, right? As you can see, we're approaching 300 speed. Okay, so we have a nice golem event coming up. And if you are somebody who's trying to min max the deck of fate and you plan to do this part right here, the upgrading of champions, something that you can do is actually double dip or actually triple dip, right? If you wait for dungeon divers to start, you can actually triple dip. You can do, uh, oh, and before I get any further, I'm going to be using Artak, and he's going to be in regen and immortal, and he's going to have the emergency heal blessing. But we'll dive more into that. I just wanted to give you guys that heads up. So you can triple dip. Adventure deck of fate, dungeon divers, and then in a few hours, uh, at least for me, in 12 hours, Ice Golem is going to start. So if, if I were you and I was min-maxing and, and I care about all of the energy and, and whatnot, I would wait for Ice Golem and the Dungeon Divers event to start. And what you can basically do is take Artak and some food into Stage 9. You can do Stage 9. Now, the reason I don't want to do Stage 9 is mainly because on Round 2, there is going to be... And I'll show you real quick, right? So you can just throw your food in there so you can level up your champions for Deck of Fate, as well as doing Dungeon Divers, as well as completing the Ice Golem uh, event. And the main reason I don't want to do Stage 9 is basically due to time. On Round 2, we're going up against Tatua Rhymehide. And Tatua Rhymehide actually places block buffs. Or block debuffs, I should say, sorry. Now, block debuffs means that Artak can't place his HP burns. And due to that, the run is going to take a lot longer. We're basically waiting for the block debuffs to fall off so that Artak can place his HP burns and then get around to taking care of the enemies. On stage one, it's fine, but stage two just adds like another two minutes. If you don't care about time, then you're totally fine doing it. But here, watch this. Tatua Rhymehide's gonna do it. And there it is. Increased defense and block buffs. So this ends up taking a lot longer than I'd like it to. He does go against the boss just fine. If you want to do stage 10, you can do stage 10. But the requirements for that are a lot harder and it's less reliable just because on stage 10, we're not going to have our positive affinity. On stage 9, 5, and 1, we have a positive affinity against the boss, right? We are magic affinity going against uh, grass type Pokemon. So we want to take every advantage as we can, especially when considering something like um, the 3% rule that is just it's just everywhere, right? So it's hard to even say that uh, my Artak right now can 100% do stage 9 even though we're positive affinity because RNG can happen and even though he has enough resistance, he could still get the heal reduction or he could still get um, the decreased defense and if the Ice Golem happens to hit really freaking hard, then I'm done, right? Now, the stats are a little bit high. You have to be going fast enough to be able to heal with regen and place the shield so that you're healing. So, you know, just just keep that in mind. Uh, reliably, I'm going to be doing stage five. So stage five is going to be my bread and butter. If you don't feel comfortable with stage five, you could definitely be doing stage uh, one as well. Or just pick the stage that you want to do, scale it to your account. I don't know how this technique works or this strategy is going to work on the normal stages because I, I don't remember if... Um, HP burns work on the normal um, stage here, but this is what I'm going to be doing, and I think it's a really great way to triple dip during the event, right? Uh, Artag is just a huge champion, and you definitely want to have, see right there, you definitely want to have decreased attack on the Ice Golem. That was really close. For some reason, the decreased attack did not land, and he almost swiped the crap out of me. But here we are. We have 16 points now. We're getting gear. We can triple dip events. If you can, what you'd want to do is find food that you can uh, throw in the lead so that you can have um, some type of aura. So stage five, we're going to be going a lot faster. Every little boost to stats that we can take, we're going to take it, whether it's HP, because we're healing with regen and immortal. Immortal sets, we're healing by 18%. If you only have regen, then it's 15%. Basically, do whatever you can to get the set going. Unfortunately, if you don't have regen, you're kind of SOL. You might try, if you have really good immortal gear, throwing a triple immortal set on Artak, and maybe that'll work. Something else that you could do is do 
Artak and Walking Tomb Drang. Artak and WTD go pretty well together. They both do HP burns. Uh, Artak, or no, sorry, not Artak. WTD in specific has an A3 that does the heals. So here we are round two. There's no block debuffs, so we're doing pretty well here. The Walking Tomb Drang will place uh, equalize HP. So he's healing everybody, and that's pretty nice to have around to help you finish off the boss. Plus, there is no requirement for accuracy on WTD. You just need him to be fully booked. So the HP burns are always going to be placing, and it's going to go a little bit faster because Artak is going to activate those HP burns on top of placing his own. So that's another option you could do. Um, obviously, do your best. And if you can't do five, drop down to one and you're going to be doing A-OK, -okay, right? And if you can't do hard, then, you know, go back to doing normal. Um, I, I don't remember if HP burns work. Somebody might have to tell me. It's been such a long time since I've bothered with normal. Um, but, you know, this is just to show you guys that it is possible this time around to do a triple dip. Triple dip for the Deck of Fates, Ice Golem, and the um, Dungeon Divers. And I'm going to show you guys Artax's build right after this. So let's just let this run out. This is a lot faster. I feel like stage nine took like, what, three, four minutes? And here we're about to end around two minutes. So definitely a lot faster. But if you're just going to go to sleep or watch a movie, you can leave it running on. And yeah, either way, it doesn't really matter. But as you can see, we're in a better spot here because in the in the um in stage nine we saw that artak was about to die but he was at half health here so when it comes to artak like i said oh he's not even an immortal my bad so he's got two stars ideally you would want three stars we'll get to that in a bit you want him at least in a regen set so with regen and obviously perception you can get it done we have the speed so we're looking at speed resistance accuracy HP defense, right? Those are the priority stats. Let me, sorry, let me slow down here for you guys because I know that um, there are some of you guys who want me to slow down to look at the specific pieces of gear or like when we're looking at masteries. I think that a lot of content creators kind of breeze through everything, but they don't give enough time to the viewers to really look at everything. And I was, I was seeing somebody complain that we're doing that too much and I'm actually a culprit of doing that as well. So resistance on the chest, is good for me because I want to have enough resistance so that I don't get frozen or I don't get the debuffs like a um, heal reduction, a heal reduction or a decreased defense put on me. Defense on the gloves. If you can get HP percent, that would be good too. If you hear any noise in the back, that's my cat. Speed with speed. This is what we have broken. Now, the other thing is because we have the emergency hope blessing and that's almost, um, it's a big thing. It's a big component to making sure that Artak can solo and be a solo god. We want to have a blood shield ring. Where do you get blood shield rings? I don't know. I don't remember. Do you remember where blood... Is it CVC? I think it's CVC. Win a few CVCs. Get that. HP is what I'd be looking for on the ring. As well as for the ascension. But we're taking attack. Attack doesn't do anything for our attack. So uh, defense or HP. And we have a feral set on him because accuracy. And I wanted more accuracy on him. Accuracy on accuracy. If you can get more speed on him. Get more speed on him as well. So that is basically what we're looking for. Fully booked, emergency heal. Now, at one star, we're only getting a 3% heal. At three stars, we're healing by 6%. Above that, nine and then 15%. So the more blessings we have, the more heals we're going to be doing. And plus we get stat boosts as well. The nice thing about our attack is also whenever an HP debuff is activated, he destroys his own max HP by 5% and then it goes up to 50%, but it also increases his damage, crit damage, and defense for 1% for each max HP destroyed, increasing his speed and resistance by 1% each per max destroyed HP. So making him really tanky the less HP that he has. And here are the masteries. As always, as always, do not blindly copy masteries, but feel free to blindly copy these masteries. We're taking resistance, we're taking improved parry because a lot of the times, and this is pretty much all around raid, critical hits are what is going to kill you. And there's nothing wrong with taking blast proof. So any AOE damage, which a lot of bosses do, is going to be reduced by 5%, but I think it's a lot more important to decrease crit hits by 8% because there's more damage mitigation there and it's very crit hit specific. 
But again, nothing wrong with AoEs because um, you know everybody's doing AoEs. Rejuvenation, increase the heals and shields that our attack is going to receive. Resurgent to have a chance to remove a random debuff. That's also very helpful. Sometimes that 3% happens. Sometimes that heal reduction goes on, but then sometimes our attack gets it removed and that's pretty helpful. Delay death, damage mitigation, we want that. Counterattack, increase the uh, the debuff duration with his A1, right? If we look at his A1, it's going to extend the duration, or specifically the HP burns, has a chance, 45% chance to extend the duration of HP burns. I think with Masteries, you can, oops. Whoops, 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 whoops. I think with Masteries, you could even extend that further with, um, to make that 50%. I think if you get Sniper, you can make that a 50% chance to increase the HP burn duration. And that's what you want to have it. Uh, now we're taking resistance. If you need more accuracy, you could definitely take Eagle Eye for the T6 Masteries. Speaking of the support tree, we're gonna be taking accuracy, more accuracy, more accuracy here. Again, that's accuracy here, accuracy here, accuracy here. We're taking Arcane Celerity to have a chance to increase the turn meter of our attack whenever a debuff expires or is removed. And he's doing that pretty often with all of his debuffs. We wanna make sure our attack is taking as many turns as possible. The more turns he takes, the more uh, heals he's going to be able to do. Remember, you need to take turns in a regen or an immortal set if you want to do any healing. Cycle of Magic, give him a chance to cool down a random skill. Hopefully it's the HP burns. Actually, no, I think that the A2 is pretty useful because the decrease attack is almost what's going to be imperative going up against the Ice Golem. Lore of Steel for some extra stat boots, uh, boosts. And this is really important here. For any solo champion, you're definitely going to want to be taking Spirit Haste because you're going to be going in with food. This is imperative, especially right now, the higher stages of Ice Golem, or the higher in stages that you go against the Ice Golem. This is also really helpful if you're uh, trying to get food in, right? So he's going to be going an extra 24 points of speed faster, Master Hexer, to increase the duration of a random debuff. Specifically, in my mind, I'm looking for an increase to the duration of decrease attack. Now, when it comes to the stats, again, priority stats. You're looking, and I'm going to focus here on Ice Golem because it's going to be Ice Golem specific this time around. You're looking for HP defense right the more hp you have the more heals you're gonna do and the more of a hp bank you're gonna have because ice golem hits hard even with decreased attack you're also gonna want a lot of defense because if you have all hp but no defense the amount of damage you take is still going to be high you could have like a hundred thousand hp and if you have like less than two thousand defense you're gonna be hit very hard and you don't want that you want to find a nice balance. So what would I aim for? Well, if you can't do better than this, or if you can't do this quite yet, and let's say you're just going to focus on hard one, I think 60k HP with like 3000, I'd go for 3500 defense would probably be where you want to aim for in terms of survivability stats. So uh, try to aim for like 60k, try to aim for about 3000 or 3500k um, you know, it, it all boils down to, and again, don't take my word with a grain of salt. I don't know everything. This could all be wrong. I'm wrong a lot. So, you know, think for yourself, most importantly, test things out for yourself because you're not going to know anything until you try it for yourself. As you can see, we're approaching 300 speed. And then when everybody dies, we're approach, we're just the right around 320 speed, right? So what would I aim for if I was a newer person? player or if I was trying to build Artac for soloing, I would aim for 260. I would aim for 260. Again, anything lower than that is pushing it. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's it's really pushing it. You definitely want to be going really fast. Any support champion that I have, 240 is the sweet number that I've found that I, I work with. But um, yeah, the faster you go, obviously the better. But if I was putting him in the optimizer, 260 is what I would be going for, the bare minimum. Now, when it comes to resistance and accuracy, okay, so I just looked it up real quick so I can give you guys facts, no printer. Resistance, the Ice Golem has a resistance of, two, of 320, so you need at least 345 accuracy, and the Ice Golem has an accuracy of three, uh, 330, you need 435. Stage nine, you need 330 accuracy and 420 resistance. Stage five, you need 270 accuracy and 360 resistance. 
On stage one, you need 225 a minimum for accuracy and a minimum of 315 resistance if you want to resist the debuffs here. From the